Hi, this is Sandy from The So-and-So. I am so excited to have you come and learn how to use the long arm machine. Excuse me. I know that there are several areas that are really concerning to new time users, and one of them is loading the machine. So this is going to be a very quick video as a resource for you and to show you it's not as hard as you might think. So on our machine, we have, th these are the leaders. You'll learn all the technical names and everything in the class, but this is truly just a teaser so you know what you're up against when you get here. Each of the leaders is marked with a center spot and we have to determine the center of our back. We're loading the back piece. Of course, I'm using this really easy little piece. Your quilt will most likely be longer or larger than this. Then I'm going to match up those halfway points. So that there is about two inches between the edge of my top and the leader. I don't measure that. Two fingers is a good measurement for me. I always have my fingers on me. I don't always have a tape measure on me. So a two finger measure off of this rod. And then we have red snappers, which make this loading process amazingly simple and fast. These are called stubbies and they're temporary. We just put them on to hold everything in place while we attach the snappers. So I'm gonna pop one of those on in the middle. I'm gonna pop one on at the end. And I'm gonna pop one on at the other end. Then I'm gonna use the actual red snappers themselves. We have two different sizes. We have the long size or the bigger <laughs> size and the medium or smaller size. <clears throat> And our purpose is to attach the red snapper in such a way that we have at least four inches beyond our quilt back. Once again, that just my hand is a good four inches, so I don't need to measure. I just need to know that. If I were to use a small one here, you can see that it's not enough because the snapper ends before my quilt back would end. So we're just gonna cast that one aside and then we attach this by popping it on the end. And then if you bend this up nicely, it opens up the track. When you get to the stubby, you just pop that off with your thumb. And really gently, it's, it's not hard as long as you have this bent up. And attach it all the way to the end of the snapper. So this leader is attached. I'm gonna to go to the front of the machine to do the same to that leader. And I know I need my stubbies, and I know that I need a long one, so I'm gonna take it with me. Sometimes I forget to do that, and then I just have to walk back and get it. It's not that far, it's not difficult, it's just easier if I bring them with me. So I like to put my quilt back up over the belly bar, which you'll learn more about that, but I like to put it up over the belly bar for added tension. I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to take the fabric that is secured and put it, just roll it up onto this bar, which is called the pickup bar and it picks up your completed quilt. Enough so that it just lays flat there on the table. This leader has provided great tension to pull that up. Now I'm going to release the leaders on both sides. Let go of that clamp. Now I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna unlock the bar that's holding that leader it's a simple toggle lock and pull the leader up so that I can attach my quilt back on a flat surface. The way I do this is different than the way some people do this. Some people um, 
do the attaching on the bar itself. Some people do it in a different way. Everybody's got their own method. This is simply one method. We'd like you to develop good habits before you find your own way. And so whatever works for you is fine. So once again, I've got this halfway mark and I have a halfway mark on my fabric as well. <clears throat> and I'm gonna lay the leader in such a way I can access my quilt bag. And once again, I'm just doing that two finger measure. So I'm a good two fingers away from that rod, pop these snappies on, uh, pardon me, pop the stubbies on in the middle and on each end. And then I'm gonna do the same and I'm going to start up at least four inches over. It can be more, it just has to be at least four inches. And then if I bend this up, you can see how nice and open that track is. So that's what makes this so easy. If I bend it, the track opens. So you can see the difference between not bent. <laughs> I don't know what that word it would be, but not bent and bent. So anyway, then I'm gonna pop that first one off and just keep this bent so that that track stays open. So now I've attached both the top and the bottom of my quilt back. Sometimes the terms just get confusing because they're new to you, but the, the top of the quilt back and the bottom of the quilt back are now both attached to the leaders. Now I'm going to go to the side of the machine and take the fabric from the pickup bar that I rolled up and put it on the top bar, a lot of that. which is not located at the top of the machine. That's okay. It's a reference what to what it's called. Okay. So because the fabric is coming from the pickup bar, that's where I'm going to unlock. I'm going to use my hand as a, as a break. Oops, and I can see, and this is going to happen to you too, I can see that my leader is caught behind the needle, and that's an easy, I just walk over and fix that. So once again, I'm going to unlock this one. I'm going to use the side of my hand, just as a gentle break on here. And I'm just taking the fabric from the pickup bar to the top bar. I'm going to let go of my hand just so you can see what happens. It just gets out of control. So we just have this gentle hand break. And of course, you know, of course it got all twisted up. So I just need to pull that out of there. But the hand break is just a, a, a tool for you to use. So I'm going to unlock this one because that's where the fabric is coming from and I'm going to advance the quilt. I'm going to lock the pickup bar and the top bar is already locked. I'm going to give it a, an extra little turn and I'm going to give this an extra little turn so that my quilt back is taut but not tight. Of course, this one's too tight, but that's not a problem. I'll just relax it a little bit. So I'm gonna take some of this back. And now I wanna just feel again, oh, this is much better. <laughs> it's taut, but not tight. You don't need to bounce any quarters off of this. It's simply, you want it taut. The next step, at the so-and-so, we do what we call floating. So I float my batting, and here's my batting. I like to fold my batting in half, and then I line that half up with the halfway mark. Obviously, if you have a normal size quilt, this makes it easier to deal with half of this than one whole width. 
and then I'm going to open that up and I'm ready to baste my batting to my backing. I'm going to bring the machine over. And I'm going to take a single stitch and I need to pull up my bobbin thread so that the bobbin thread lays on top above the backing and the batting. And then I'm going to baste. And I'm going to baste on a horizontal lock. This is going to give me a straight plumb line, so I know that this is a straight line. My quilt is not always straight, sad but true, and so I want to make sure that this is straight. So I'm going to touch start using the handles. I'm going to take a stitch to the right, and then I'm going to bring it back to the left simply to adhere it better. And then I'm going to just keep stitching all the way across. When I get to this point, I'm going to stop using the handle. I'm going to pull the machine off to the right and snip close to my project, not close to my needle, simply because I don't want to be threading the needle all day. So the further I get away from that, the, ah, the better off I'll be. Okay. I just throw these up here in the meantime. Once again, I'm going from center out. So I'm going to take a single stitch. I'm going to pull up my bobbin thread. Which of course I can't access, so I just need a pin. And because the machine is on horizontal lock, I can't get in there to get the thread up. So that's all that takes is to just do that. And now I'm going to go to the left. So I'm going to touch start again, take a securing stitch. <laughs> there we go. These just get in the way and you can stop and cut them. I just don't stop until I'm, I have a scissors in my hand at one point or another. Same thing. I'm going to just come back and get a securing stitch on there, stop it. And then I'm going to pull it off to the left and cut close to my project, not close to my needle. Now is a chance for me to get rid of all this mess. And I just set that aside and clean up after myself at some point. I don't just throw those on the floor. There's nobody here that's going to clean up after you. <laughs> so you have to clean up after yourself. Um, now I'm going to put my quilt top on. And that too, I have to find center. And I just do that by finger folding it. It's not a difficult process. Don't need it at the bottom now that I'm thinking about that and that's okay too. So I'm going to line that center up with this center mark so that I know that I'm centered and my quilt is centered. The quilt top is centered upon my sandwich. Our quilt back should always be four inches wider and four inches, pardon me, that's not an accurate statement. My quilt back should be eight inches wider and eight inches longer so that I get a four inch perimeter all the way around. Obviously this is a really teeny sample, so I'm not at four inches on my back or batting, but the back and the batting both need to be eight inches longer and eight inches wider. <clears throat> Pardon me. Now I'm going to take this horizontal lock off because I want to be able to freely move the machine around. Now I can. <laughs> there we go. So I'm going to start to stitch. I'm going to put this in regulate mode, which is the mode that regulates the machine for me. I don't have to do anything to maintain a steady stitch because the machine will do all the work for me. I'm gonna take up my bobbin thread. Now that the machine is free to move, it's easy to get at my bobbin thread. 
So I have both my bobbin and my top thread in my hand. And I'm going to touch start. And all I'm going to do here is truly is doodle. And so doodling before you come in really helps you feel more comfortable with what you're doing. But I'm going to touch start. And that is all there is to it. This is a pretty wide open one. This is just a little meander. You're kind of creating puzzle pieces if you see that. You can make that really open. You can make that really tight. This is kind of a more of a medium density. Whatever you do, it's your quilt. That's up to you. In the class, you're going to learn so much more. This is a little teaser to get you excited about coming on in and learning how to use the long arm machine here at the so-and-so. See you at the so-and-so.